Currently, the Houston Rockets are in a bizarre position where no team ever wants to be. Well, yeah, James Harden is one of the best offensive weapons that this league has ever seen. There's no question about that. And pairing him with another talented all-star and former MVP in Russell Westbrook should have propelled the Rockets to the NBA Finals. That was the idea. While they were okay in the regular season while showing some spurts of greatness, but we know what happened after that. It was the same problem for Houston all over again in the playoffs. Well, of course, there's no shame in losing to the Lakers in the second round, but the problem is, we just saw how the Rockets basically gave up after the first couple of games in that series, and that's not really a good look for a team with two superstars who were supposed to take them over the top. And so here we are, Russ has already requested a trade from the Rockets just a few weeks after the team lost Mike D'Antoni and general manager Daryl Morey. Well, trading Westbrook isn't going to be easy for a lot of reasons and there are certain questions that come with it. Because for real, Russ is practically untradeable at this point. But realistically, does trading him actually equate to Houston being ready to blow it all up? Or can they still get something substantial out of this situation to be able to potentially continue building a team around James Harden? So what's good guys, it's Rira Balls in here and in this video, we'll take a look at some of the Russell Westbrook trade ideas which are out there and we'll figure out which of those makes sense. Let's get to it. It's always convenient to argue that James Harden isn't an ideal star to be teammates with solely based on his playing style. And you can always blame him for Houston coming up short in the playoffs year after year. But was pairing Russ with James Harden even the right move to do by Daryl Morey? Was this actually the crucial mistake that could have cost the Rockets their future? Well, in my opinion, trading Chris Paul for Russ in the first place was more of a swing for the fences kind of trade. I think the irony here is that even though Daryl Morey was a known proponent of analytics and all that, he just gave up to the enticing idea of having another alpha superstar besides James Harden without really considering what the numbers suggest. Because if you look at the numbers from the 2018 to 2019 season, which was the season preceding this trade, Westbrook ranked 10 in the entire NBA in usage percentage while playing for OKC, while Harden is expected rank first in the entire league in that category. And from the get-go, that in itself together with their obviously clashing play styles was already an early indication that Houston's offense was going to have problems. Well of course, it's safe to argue that adding another superstar to a team with an already established alpha could produce great results and even win you a championship. We've seen it before in Miami when LeBron James became the number one guy in a Heat team which already had Dwayne Wade as its top dog for the longest time. But the obvious difference with that team and this Houston Rockets team is that Dwayne Wade knew from the get-go that he had to play number two to LeBron no matter what. Or at least, he needed to sacrifice a little bit by complementing LeBron's playstyle for them to win a chip. Well obviously, this wasn't gonna happen for the Rockets because neither one of Russ or Harden was able to adjust to an offense which would accommodate two ball dominant playmakers. And this is also part of the reason why we hear Westbrook demanding a trade for him to be able to play more like how he did in Oklahoma City. Which was of course, as the sole offensive initiator who constantly had the ball in his hands. But if you look at it, it's not going to be easy trading the Brody's contract. Well, no disrespect to Russ, he's actually my favorite point guard and he's still a star but for real, Russ just might be the most untradeable superstar in the NBA so far for a lot of reasons. Well for one, the guy still has 132.6 million left in his contract over the next 3 seasons. And if he gets traded, the 44.2 million dollars which his team will owe him annually will actually be the most expensive per year contract ever traded in NBA history. And to put that into context, this upcoming 2021 season will just be the 5th season in NBA history where the salary cap will not increase. But the thing is, Westbrook's contract includes 8% annual increases, and this makes his contract situation less than ideal for the majority of teams as of the moment. This is not only because of Westbrook's not so good reputation, but also because of the cash crunch that teams are experiencing due to the pandemic. So you get the point. Trading for Westbrook's huge contract won't help a lot of teams at all. And one more thing, if you're going to look into the NBA trade market for guards, there are realistically a lot more options which teams would rather trade for such as guys like Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, Drew Holiday, Mike Conley, DeMar DeRozan or Victor Oladipo. And that itself gives very limited room for the Rockets to work with in terms of securing a trade partner for Westbrook. Well, ideally, Russ wants to be traded to a winning team where he can play the same way as when he was the main floor general with the Thunder. But if you look at it, most of the contending teams already have their established point guard set in place. 
Well, you can make a case for Miami trading for him, but doing such will just ruin their cap flexibility and that would just prevent them from pursuing Giannis in 2021. There's also some suggestions that the Lakers should trade for him. Well, yeah, they don't have a real point guard aside from Rondo, but LeBron and AD need supplementary guys and not another ball dominant guard who can't shoot. But ultimately, Russ should have a place in this league because after all, stars are still the most valuable assets in the NBA. I think trading him is just about finding the right fit for both parties. But in my opinion, out of all the potential landing spots for Russ which have been talked about lately, I really think that one of the most realistic options fit-wise and salary-wise would be the LA Clippers. Of course, a lot of people would call this trade ridiculous stating that this would just cause a potential problem with the Clippers offense. But hear me out, I think this actually could work both ways in my opinion. Well, if there's any team out there who can afford the luxury tax payments that Westbrook would incur, it would definitely be the Clippers with Steve Ballmer. And basketball-wise, I think Westbrook can help this Clippers team in a lot of ways. Last season, the Clippers just finished 28 in the NBA in total passes and 22nd in total assists. In short, they need a better point guard who will attract defenses to open up more space for PG and Kawhi. Well, Westbrook will definitely address that need. Yeah, I think if the Clippers are going to trade for Russ, then it shouldn't be PG that they would have to trade for him. Because I think for the Clippers, having Russ would only work if both PG and Kawhi are still on the team. Well, realistically, I think the most viable option for the Clippers here is to trade Lou Williams, Patrick Beverly, and then include Montrez Harrell via sign and trade to be able to match salaries. That's probably the best package that they could send the Rockets without giving up Paul George. I think that trade is a win win for both sides. Well, for the Rockets, this gives James Harden additional solid pieces in Lou Will and Patrick Beverly, who would still help them contend as long as they plan to. Plus, they get the tough big man that they need in Montrez Harrell. And for the Clippers, well, I think the real appeal of a Russ, PG, and Kawhi trio is actually seen with the pure talent that they will bring. And this team will just be outright dangerous despite all the questions of how Russ will fit in. Well, another thing, last season, the Clippers just ranked 21st in the NBA in transition offense efficiency. Well, Russ will immediately help them become a more dangerous running team, and you can just imagine PG becoming one of the most overqualified spot up shooters in the NBA with Russ and Kawhi together with him on the floor. So, yeah, I think it's actually a very viable trade for both sides. While well, moving on, there's also rumors about the Knicks being interested in trading for Russ. Well, sure, why not? The Knicks can outright send a package centered probably around Frank Tilakina, Julius Randle, some cap fillers, and a couple of first rounders. Well, yeah, this obviously works for the Rockets long term, but I think trading for Russ isn't the best thing to do if you're New York. Well, yeah, they have the cap space, but trading for Russ will just rob them of the chance to have flexibility during the years where RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson are still under their rookie contracts. So if you're the Knicks, why not just sign cheaper solid pieces and prioritize the development of your core guys instead? While you can argue that Russ will be the attraction that New York needs and he'll be able to mentor Barrett and Robinson with his leadership. But the thing is, he'll just dominate the ball whenever he wants and it will just limit their young players' touches. While I think if the Knicks are looking for leadership, they might as well trade for Chris Paul instead. While he also was a painful contract but at least, he's proven that he can be a mentor to young guys like Shea Gilgis Alexander in Oklahoma City. And rest assured, he can create tons of great looks for his teammates as well. He's the point guard after all. Well you see, it's quite a challenge to find a team that would trade for Russ at this point. But if I were to get creative in terms of finding the right scenario for Russ at this point in his career, I think the Wizards would be a great destination for him. And I think a John Wall-Russell Westbrook swap actually makes sense. Because for one, John Wall is one of the worst contracts in the NBA, which is even worse than Westbrook's. And for the Wizards, if you'd have to pay a guy, why not get an upgraded version of John Wall? Well, having Russ will make the Wizards a guaranteed top 10 offensive team and this will just strengthen their case for retaining Bradley Beal. And with the potential of Bertans returning plus a couple solid pieces around them, I think a Russ and Beal tandem can take the Wizards further than people would expect. But yeah, for the Rockets, you might think that John Wall would just be another guard who can't shoot just like Russ. But I think this is the kind of trade that you would want to do because it gives you a lot of options moving forward if you're Houston. Well, John Wall is a guy who will still help Harden win and this will still make the Rockets competitive. But well, if this doesn't work out and the Rockets decide to finally blow it all up and rebuild, they can still flip John Wall for some assets. And that is why I think the Rockets should trade for Wall not specifically because he's a good fit with James Harden, but because having him gives them some leverage to have assets for the impending post-Harden era in Houston, which I think might not be that far off from now anyway. So you see, Things are just messed up in H-Town as of the moment, but it's just too late to point fingers really. 
And with the Rockets having a new front office, things are just bound to shake up. While no matter how difficult it may be, Russell Westbrook getting traded is inevitable. But honestly, this trade just might be the tipping point. Well, James Harden still appears to be committed to winning in Houston, but the question is, until when? At this point, it's all for the new front office to decide, but realistically, I wouldn't be surprised to see a new look Rockets next season. A Rockets team without either one of their two superstars. Well, I may be wrong, but we just might have witnessed the final days of the James Harden era in Houston. Thank you guys for watching until the end, and please don't forget to drop a thumbs up if you've liked this video. And where do you think Russ will land this offseason? Feel free to drop your comment below. And I'm inviting you to subscribe to the channel as well because you don't want to miss some fire NBA content that I put out on a regular basis. Again, this is Rira Balls, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.